The first problem we're going to work, we're going to work a classic Cappian problem. We're going to work a problem where we're actually trying to find the required return. This is the information that we have. We got a formula at the top. The return of J equals the risk free rate plus the beta. And in parentheses, you have the return on the market minus the risk free rate. We have a beta of um, 0.9, 0.9, a risk free rate of 8%, and a market return of 12%. Um, That's fine, the required return. So we just use the formula. We're looking for RJ. Risk-free rate is um, eight. I keep it as a whole. Well, I don't, I don't do a percent. Plus the beta. In the parentheses, we have twelve minus eight. Parentheses first. So that gives us point nine plus eight. Maybe eight plus three point six. Will give us eleven point six. This is required return. Pretty straightforward, pretty cut and dry. We'll come back and we'll do a problem where we have to find another element of the capital. In this problem, we're going to try and find the risk free rate given all the other information. It's, I call this small scale algebra because it's algebra on the small scale. What we have to do is we have to use the same formula. But what I do to make it simple is I place X for the variable that I'm looking for. In this case, we're looking for risk-free rate, and that, that shows up in two places. So it gave me the required return already. So that'd be 15 equals X plus the beta 1.25. Return on the market is 14% minus X. So once I solve for X, I will have my risk free rate. So I might skip some steps because it's kind of simple, but 15 equals X plus 17.5 minus 1.25X. Now we have to combine like terms. It's implied that this is 1x, of course. So therefore, we can, we can do it both of them at the same time. We know we have to move this to the other side. And that will become negative. So this would be negative 2.5x. Negative 2.5 equals 0.25x. So you got the 0.25x. Negative 1.25 minus the 1x gives you... 0.25x left, and it's negative. When we solve for x, we find out that x equals 10. So in this problem, the risk free rate is 10. To confirm, we just plug it into the equation and make sure all the numbers add up. We'll do another problem after this. Welcome back. Now we'll compute the return on the market. Given the variables required return of 16%, beta of 1.10, and risk free rate of 9%. We use the same formula. Return of the J equals the risk free rate plus beta. In parentheses, we have the return of the market minus the risk free rate. So, first, we plug in the variables that we were given 16% is required return, risk free rate 9% plus beta 1.10 parentheses we have x to denote the required return minus the risk free rate then we do the math 16 9 plus 1.10x minus 9.9 .9. Combine like terms. When we move this on the other side, that would be positive, so 16.9 equals 
0.10x. We solve for x. So the market return is 15.36. I solve for x. We'll come back and do our last problem. Lastly, in this segment on CAPM, we are going to find beta. Now, as I stated in the first segment, you can find the actual beta by performing a regression, but this is finding the beta as a missing element of the capital asset pricing model. So, required return on the market is 15. The um, return on the mark, the required return is 15. The return on the market is 12.5, and the risk rate is 10, and we're to find beta. So we plug these into our formula, 15 equals 10 plus, we're well going to put x instead of beta, 12.5 minus 10. Formula calculations inside of the parentheses, 2.5. be 2.5x next we move this over here to become a negative so that'll be 5 equals 2.5x so x equals 2 so beta will equal 2 hope that's simple enough that concludes our section on manipulating the capital asset pricing model see you next time